My name is Dr. Maria Bogdan. I am a media researcher. The title of my lecture is The Media Representation of Roma in the Age of Social Media. I regard media as a privileged tool of late modern culture that functions as the public sphere where the different social interactions and discourses can be detected. Using the words of Stuart Hall, the world is saturated with media and we see our reality through them. It means that media has the power of representing the different concepts of our society, such as race, gender, ethnicity, class and religion, and also to contribute to their constructions. These representations are not innocent, but they all reflect ideologies that construct these categories and through them our own realities and society. Understanding the concept, the meaning, the image of Roma in society can not only show how Roma are positioned in society, but it can also contribute to the better understanding of racism against Roma and Egyptism and of the European discourse of racism and diversity as well. I also believe that through the results we may understand more about the societies we live in and may find answers on how to make them more livable for all of us. As a researcher, I regard racism and diversity as the main challenging and organizing concepts of societies when reacting to difference. Thus, they are basic concepts when talking about trauma. The understandings of these concepts have been shaped not purely by the events or periods of times in history, but by the way these events or times were described, talked about or not. Miss out of the main discourses. For example, until recently, the historical perspective has been missing from the main political and social discourses when talking about the Roma, due to the presumptions that Roma were illiterate for centuries, so they never recorded their own history and no one else did that. It's been just recently when historians, linguistics and art historians began to explore and research the historical background of the Roma. It is the part of the scholarly turn that has started in researches on Roma and observing and analysing the media contents in an interdisciplinary way in the light of critical theory contributes to this turn. The aim of this shift is to introduce new perspectives when describing and analyzing how Roma live in society and thus generating better understandings about society itself. According to the new approaches and findings, we already know that the struggle for equality, freedom, citizenship and recognition has always characterized the life of Roma from the moment they appeared in Europe. As a media researcher, I am always talking about the present, but possessing such knowledge like what happened to us during and after the Holocaust or learning about the enslavement of Roma highly contributes for my work. When analyzing the present hostility against Roma in society through the media text. This scholarly turn is also the part of the new Roma identity construction process and I hope that with my researches, I can contribute to that too. In this slide, in my lecture, I will talk about the media representation of Roma in the last decade in Europe. According to my understandings, when it is about the media representation of Roma, then it is also about the media representation of the Roma movement, especially when we talk about social media, which is the space of self-representation. I will refer to this topic on local and on international level as well. For the local, I will use the example of Hungary that I wrote my PhD dissertation about. In the following, this lecture has three parts. The first part is about the theoretical background. In the second part, I will briefly summarize my understandings of the Roma image in the media, mainstream media. In the third part, I will focus on self-representation and social media about the theoretical background of my researches. The details I give here about the theoretical background of my understandings 
are only highlights of the complex theories I work with. I will put more emphasis on summarizing the main points of Stuart Hall's representation theory, since it connects to the additional theories that I use to understand the position, status of the Roma in society through media. Representation is, for example, one of the main concepts of postcolonialism, and the theory of modern racism or the theories of the stranger reflect the same constructive way of analyzing and understanding the world. So, about media representation. Cultural studies gives the contextual framework of my researches. Stuart Hall's basic term when talking about culture and media is the term of representation. His theory about the politics of representation summarizes and embodies the theoretical foundations of cultural studies. Representation theory gives a model of how we construct our reality, how we understand and make sense to things in our world. So when we talk about the representation of a certain thing in life, we talk about the way of thinking that certain thing is defined according to. Representation happens through language. It is how we use the language to express the reality we experience and live in. There are three approaches to understand this process, three models. Each seeks to answer the question how we create meanings, how meanings are generated, and how we can determine the meaning of something. The founders of cultural studies accepted the constructive approach for making researches, so representatives of this field continue to do so. The core statement of the constructionist approach is that meaning is created through language. This representation model recognizes the public and social character of language. According to the definition, things do not have meaning in themselves, but we construct them through the concepts and the symbols, the representational systems. This approach separates the material world where things and people exist from the world of the symbolic practices and processes where representation, meaning and language operate. It means that meanings are constructed through the symbolic functions of the signals, not through the materialistic dimension. It is the social actors who construct the meanings through the conceptual systems and the language, and thus give meaning and sense to the world through communicating with each other about it. Stuart Hall applied the representation theory to understand the impact of the mainstream media on society. Connecting to the theory, he worked out the encoding-decoding model of communication that he elaborated in connection with consuming, watching television, and basically described the mechanism on how media content produced by television works. Though this model was developed in case of television contents, it is now applied to all sorts of media content. The encoding-decoding model assumes that text has multiple meanings. Text is polysemic, which in the aspect of examining the media effects means that a text may have a different meaning for the communicator and for the recipient which means that not all of us understand the particular text in the same way. So in the aspect of the cultural studies and the representation theory, text is interpreted widely. Why is meaning important? Meanings can decide a group's position in society, determine knowledge about them, can influence social identity and values, and shape the self-image of a group as well. So in this slide, prejudice about trauma can be manifested and amplified through media representation. But in the meantime, it also means that media representation can contribute to changing the negative judgment of trauma. We are continuously making sense of our reality. The production of meanings is continuous and they are never one of a kind, which shows that meaning can change, but it is important to see that the most effective way to change them is through the same path they are created. Just like Jacques Derrida's deconstruction understands it. 
Deconstruction is also called as the synonym for justice, because as a way of thinking and as an approach to reality, it can serve as a strategy for solving the problem of racist attitudes and basically racism against a social group. Based on understanding language as a system of signs where words have meanings because of the contrast between these signs, deconstruction in the very end is about encouraging the ongoing and constant analysis of these oppositions. They cannot be suppressed because oppositions always re-establish themselves since this is the way we make sense of reality. It is important to notice the hierarchy in oppositions so that the contrast is never innocent, that it cannot be innocent and it cannot be without any drive or interest, but its nature is always binary that constitutes power. So instead of suppressing the opposite by another opposite, in this case, for example, by producing purely positive messages as an offset, as fighting against prejudices, against trauma, it is essential to understand first the roots of the prejudiced attitude. For doing that, it is effective if we get inside the prejudicial image and blow it from the inside. This means to change the perspective when observing the prejudiced representation about trauma and analyze the one that creates these contents. By understanding the perspective that creates the prejudiced image of trauma, it is possible to challenge it. As a result, not only the knowledge about the group which suffers from prejudices begins to change in society, but the prejudice and racism they have been facing can also be reduced. This has a strong effect on the identity of the whole society as well, since it gives the opportunity to reinterpret it. However, it is important to note that due to the fact that opposites re-establish themselves, since this is the way we make sense of our reality, deconstruction as an approach means that it is an endless analysis. So what comes afterwards and analyzes means another opposition that will be challenged. In other words, problematizing whiteness is an essential step in this process. And here I mean that when it is about racism, we have to see that the center of racism is the unidentified, undiscussed whiteness, as very unique thinkers like W.E.B. Du Bois Franz Fanon or James Baldwin have already pointed it out. It is called critical whiteness studies that only recently emerged as an academic field and which gives another way, another perspective for disrupting racism by turning the focus of examination on the invisible signifier. This is called problematizing whiteness. Besides focusing on and talking about the racialized other, and this brings back Derrida's deconstruction that I have just talked about. With the words of Dyer, as long as race is something only applied to non-white peoples, as long as white people are not racially seen and named, they refunction as a human norm. Other people are raised, we are just people. There is no more powerful position than that of being just human. The claim to power is the claim to speak for the commonality of humanity. For that, critical discourse analysis is an efficient tool. By using this research method in regards to media text, we can map and understand the discourse that places a particular social group in certain social status while defining the knowledge about them. I also find post-colonialism, the social and philosophical interpretation of the stranger, the theory of modern symbolic racism as important additional theories, understandings and methods to understand how media works. Without the intention of fully covering all of them, I only highlight some points of these core ideas in light of representation. Edward Said worked out the historical and ideological foundations of post-colonialism in his work Orientalism, in which he identifies the Western gaze and the Orient 
and gives the interpretation of the concept of the other. Representation is one of the basic concepts of post-colonialism and its examination is decisive in the interpretation of hierarchical socio-historical situations. Spivak clarifies the concept of the subaltern and determines its position in society. Franz Fanon talks about the evolution of the subaltern identity, the image of the dark-skinned man in the eyes of the dominant white gazes. Modern racism theory refers to a coherent belief system that originally reflects an underlying unidimensional prejudice towards black people in the United States. These beliefs include the stereotype that blacks are morally inferior to white people and that they violate traditional white American values such as hard work and independence. In the sense of the prejudice belief system, it is very similar to that Roma are facing in societies and it makes this theory applicable on describing the hatred against Roma. Modern racism is based on the concept of prejudice, which is understood through visibility and distance strangeness. Modern racism is subtle, indirect, it is not linked directly to race, but indirectly through social and political issues. It is the most prevalent racial attitude today. The discourse of the stranger is the discourse of distance. The psychological and physical, the political and the social distance. For example, the understandings of Georg Simmel and Alfred Schutz belong here, and Derrida gives the philosophical interpretation of the stranger. About the research results. With the help of these disciplines and with the help of critical discourse analyses, the results of my researches on the media representation of Roma prove the presence of modern racism against Roma in society. My researches also show that the mainstream media representation of Roma reinforces the prejudices and racism against them in such a way that the mainstream media representation of Roma continuously places and keeps Roma in the position of the stranger. My researches also show that giving response to the prejudiced media representation and society has been more intense since the spread of social media use. Social media became the main platform of the Roma movements where they can not only communicate easily, but this space empowered the identity discourses and channel the locals into an intense international one, where the creation of a strong transnational community is going on. In other words, social media is where participating in knowledge production that Ian Hancock calls as talking back has been intensively happening throughout the last decade. According to Hancock's understanding, Roma should participate in knowledge production we should begin to formulate, transform, dismantle and rebuild, deconstruct the prejudice discourse on Roma by being actively present in different areas of societies that defines knowledge production. Media is one of the most important areas where knowledge production actually happens. And within, if not earlier, but for 2021, it became obvious in general, that social media has become the public sphere of societies, even though these are spaces run by high-tech companies. Actually, social media is a great example for the constructivist understanding of reality. How these sites were originally designed and how people, privately or professionally, like journalists, activists, organizations or politicians, have been using them, shows a great difference that made these high-tech companies every day face such important issues like fake news, hate speech, racism, and so on. Basically, through its communication structure, social media is one of the most important areas where knowledge production actually happens. Social media restructured how journalism media works, how information spreads, and what information is, and how news are born and structured. Having Roma journalists and establishing Roma-themed press organizations has been a relevant part of the response to prejudiced media representation. But the age of social media 
produce new characters for the public sphere, like the character of the influencer whose activity shapes the representation process. Social media has changed the definition of activism and movement. It has become visible that to be a member of the movement is not about titles, but about the active participation in the discussions, in shaping the discourses on Roma. The local and the international scene of the Roma movement became actually visible for a larger audience than earlier due to social media, and their goals and actions have been shaped by the constant and immediate feedback they receive for their actions. I made researches on the Hungarian and the international scene of the Roma movement as well. The main discourses for Roma communities on social media is the identity discourse. Constructing a positive collective identity for the Roma communities has been the main activity of the Roma movements recently, locally and internationally as well. This activity essentially targets the Roma communities, but at the same time it is meant to be a message and an example for the non-Roma as well. So far the main decisive and community organizing term concept is resistance, and it is followed by the concepts of belonging and resilience. These concepts are initiated in the identity discourse as a reference to decisive local or international events and personal stories from the past and the present. Roma organizations have come up with new identity projects where they, in one hand, display role models from the present who could emerge from the struggles by themselves and thus can stand as role models not only for their own Roma communities, but for the wider social scene too. They are called also as heroes because they are able to succeed in an excluding society with unequal chances, if not otherwise, morally. According to their activities on social media so far, some of them can be regarded as influencers as well. And in the other hand, the identity discourse is about history in the Roma perspective. For example, that Roma were also fighting in the freedom fights of Hungary in 1956. But the most referred one is the most tragic part of the 20th century's Europe, the Holocaust. Roma were the victims of this tragic scene of European history, but it took long time when it was officially acknowledged or was allowed to be publicly commemorated. And as an information, it is still missing from the European education. That is why it is called the Forgotten Holocaust. Important researches that reveal more information about the Roma Holocaust have just started, and it is the social media scene that could support this topic with the essential visibility and dynamic that is necessary for the Romani communities to discuss the new findings and basically begin to process the trauma of the Holocaust, which includes the decades of silence about it. One of the first things the historical perspective of the discourse does that it personalizes these historical times, displays characters and talks about their lives, tells their stories, what happened to them, for example, during the Holocaust. This deconstruction, this truth speaking, challenges the prejudiced position of Roma in society by the new information and understandings, and that also empowers the Roma communities. And in the aspect of role models, all these characters from the past and the present represent the real, non-violent, morally elevated resistance to the discriminating social and political systems, which is an effective tool against racism. This identity construct image intends to break down the Roma image of the criminal, the scapegoat or the victim. As a counterpart, it manifests and empowers the concept of hero and pride. Roma journalists, social media activists, influencers have been actively shaping the discourse in the online media scene. But the question is, is it enough and effective against the hate speech, the fake news and the misinformation 
that are freely spreading around the social media sites. In the upcoming panel discussion, I hope that I can discuss this question with powerful Roma and Sinti journalists. Please join us.